So you see those guitar players who are just playing chords like everywhere when they solo and I'm sure you're wondering like what the hell are they playing man you know? So it's actually really easy they're basically playing the same chord most of the time. So if we're playing something over a C major 7 we could play a C major 7 chord all across the neck and go from high to low and really give it this unique cool sound. So I'm starting on ending just on my normal major 7 chord just to give us a place to, to start with that we're probably and hopefully familiar with. Now the trick to these chords when it comes to soloing is staying on the higher levels. So if you think about the chords that we always start learning any of those bar chords or even when we get into the jazz chords, the roots on the E or the A string like this G major 7 or this C major 7. Right, and we have those bass notes in there, particularly the E and the A string, right, they're very low. And we don't want chords that full when we're soloing. So if you want to incorporate a more complex harmony in your soloing, you got to use the top four strings. And those four notes are actually the minimum you could have to create a full major seven chord. From there, let's look a little bit more in detail about what these inversions actually are. So with this first one right here, we want to see it coming from that C root right there. And this is actually a second inversion because the fifth is in the root right there. And then we go to our next one. And this is a third inversion because the seventh is in the root. And we continue on to root position. And this would be first inversion. With the third in the root right there. And this inversion is really exciting too because these two notes right here is a very dissonant harmony. So it, when you put it all together it has this very kind of cool mystical sound. It's nice. So now that we have those four, we want to get used to them. We really want to drive these shapes home. So what we're going to do is create this exercise where we go through all 12 keys going backwards in the circle of fifths. So after C, we would go to F. After F, we would go to B flat, and so on. Now from there we could do the same thing for the minor shapes. So we find our C minor chord right here, and we can start again with that second inversion with the fifth on the bottom. We go up to our third inversion, and then root position, and first inversion. And one thing about this root position, sometimes people play it with this bar right here. And then you have your pinky free. Your little things like that. So 
So to practice this and really drive these shapes home again, we could go through that circle of fifths backwards and just really get all 12 keys and get super familiar with these four shapes right here. In music, we have three kinds of seven chords, major seven, minor seven, and dominant seven. So we did major seven and minor seven. Now dominant seven, I don't really wanna do that because it's such a different world and it's there's so much that goes into it and it's very dependent on the context of the chord progression, how you might use a seven chord. So we're not gonna really worry about that right now. We're just gonna do major seven and minor seven, drive those shapes home and even have those tonal centers to play around with because a lot of these shapes can work just over a key center as well, which will sound pretty nice. So now that we can go up and down the entire neck playing one chord through all the four voicings, now we can make something a little bit more interesting and not stick to just the seventh chord, but we could play different variations of the same type of chord that might be a little bit spicier and a little bit more interesting and can connect the chord a little bit more to go up and down the neck that you would hear a little bit more often in Neil Soul. So here's my C major seven chord. And I'm gonna start with the same one, that uh, second inversion, and then I'm gonna go right here. And I keep on going. And then kind of back to this, you know, C major seven shape right there, but just those top four strings. So then I can go down. major seven shape right there going down a little bit different and we can make a little exercise out of this to bring in some of those pinky movements get used to that get used to these shapes as well and practice that through all 12 keys but let's just look at just our first key right here And here we'll take it over to minor as well. So we'll start with C minor and see if we can find these shapes. When we're switching through keys with these shapes, what helps me to see where I'm at is to relate to a root note of a chord that I would already know. So I know this C major seven right here. I know my roots here on the A string and I could kind of see where that's coming from for this first shape. And then I know my C major seven right here, my C root, and I can see that root as well. And going up, this one's a little tricky, but I still want to relate it to that root root right there. And then coming up this way, I'm gonna relate it to this shape, right? Just like that top part right there, until I get right back to this shape. It's a little tricky getting used to all these different shapes, but if you practice them in all the 12 keys, you're definitely gonna get them down really good and not be confused and be ready to bust them out in your improvisation at any point and you'll sound really dope. The tabs are available for all my wonderful Patreon supporters along with exclusive lessons, additional tabs and courses and jam tracks as well. Thank you so much for the support. Be sure to subscribe if you learned something today. Keep jamming and stay nasty.